الحمد لله الذي الحمد لله الحمد لله يخلق ويقتار وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده القهار وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله المصطفى المختار وصلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه المهاجرين منهم وأنصار وتسليم وسلم تسليم كثير أما بعد الحمد لله وعلى فمشنا الله جل وعلا this discussion today bismillah uh, will be a talk addressing the issue of being more fiqh we're going to explain what that mean and less strictly and we're going to explain what that mean to avoid issues that are sticky all right um allah azza wa jalla says in his book ya ayyuhalladhina amanu idha laqitum fiyatan fathbitu wadhkuru allaha kathiran la'allakum tuflihun wa ati'u allaha wa rasulahu wa la tanaza'u fatafshalu wa tadhhab rihukum wasbiru inna allaha ma'as sabirin Allah jalla wa ala he says in this book which is surah anfal the 8th chapter of the Quran, which is also the 45th and the 46th verse, Allah addressed the believers how they supposed to behave when they encounter or engage an enemy on the battlefield. Okay, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, O you who believe, when you meet, when you engage or have an encounter with the enemy, all right, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Fathbitu, remain firm, remain firm in your stance, in your unity. And your unison, remain firm in your position against them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَذْكُرُوا اللَّهَ كَثِيرًا لَعَلَّكُمْ تُفْلِحُونَ And remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala often so that you will be successful. Then Allah says something in the next verse, the 46th verse, which is pertinent to what we're going to talk about today. Allah jalla wa'ala says, وَعَطِيعُ اللَّهَ وَالرَّسُولَهُ وَعَطِيُ اللَّهُ وَرَسُولَهُ And obey Allah and His Messenger. وَلَا تَنَازَعُوا This is important. And do not, do not cause dis discord. Do not cause disagreement. Do not cause conflict. Do not cause strife. Meaning, in other words, do not do this amongst yourselves. Don't disagree. Don't dispute. Don't have discord. Don't have disagreements amongst yourself. Allah says, فَتَفْشَلُوا Because what's going to happen it's going to cause the army, it's going to cause the unity of the Muslims to become weak. It's going to cause them to be weak, especially in face of the opposition of their enemy or those who they encounter. It's not going to make them strong. So the fact of disagreement and discord and um, uh, tanazaru disputes, these things harm and they actually takes away from the actual... Um, Unity in the firm stance because Allah says in the first verse fethbitu when you encounter against the opposition against the enemy Then you must fethbitu remain firm So how can you remain firm if you're going to have strikes and discords which leads your hearts to what now differing? And you having something against your brother or you having something against your sister Which will not allow you to stand in a, um, a, a unison stance with that brother or sister because of what you have in your heart towards that person. So Allah says, do not do that. Okay? Do not have this dispute or the discord. Do not. Because it's going to cause y'all to become weak. But Allah says, remain patient upon your stance, upon your unity. As Allah says in another verse in Surah Al-Furqan, Allah Jalla says, وَكَذَلِكَ جَعَوْنَاكُمْ جَعَوْنَاكُمْ بَعْضَ لِبَعْضٍ فِتْنَةٍ أَتَصْبِرُونَ Allah said, likewise, that we made you a trial to one another. We made you a fitna to one another. So remain patient because there are going to be some things you're going to see. There are going to be some things that you're going to hear. There are going to be some things that you're not going to like from your brother and your sister that might have might occur. And even there, like vice versa, there are some things people will not like, like about you. But we must have a guidelines. We must be patient with one another as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explains. All right. And this is important. So why did we, why are we having a discussion about being more fickle? What do we mean by being more fickle? All right, we're going to talk about when we say being more fickle, meaning be more, um, let, let's just say, be more understanding of the Masail, be more usuli, be more a person who has learned. 
A person who understand when we say be more ficky, know that everything is not black and white. Everything is not what you deem it to be. If there are areas where that can be applied. Now in an Akita, it is black and white. It is crystal clear. There are some elements of Akita that there have been uh, some disagreements, but in the overall picture that we understand from our Salaf, from the Sahabas on down, is that the Akita is one. The Akita is sound, that it is strong. But then the acts in the areas of Ibadat, the acts of worship, and the acts of how we carry out different things, whether it's regarding iktisadiyya, whether it's regarding economics, whether it's regarding um, salat, whether it's regarding fasting, whether it's regarding how to command the good, forbid the evil, whether it's regarding how to do any things of transactions, buying and selling, whether it's regarding multiple different fears outside of Akita, then they are all areas where fiqh must be applied. Do you understand? So when we say be more fiqhi, be more understanding that it is room in these areas where things can be extracted for those whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala endowed from the ulama and the fuqaha who have the ability to extract and make istinbaq. So when you understand when we say be more fiqhi, you understand that when you know that there are different in a room to grow in these areas, then you know that, that the difference that occur due to the different thick issues is not enough ground to split hairs. Do you understand? We can't move as a unit if we're going to split hairs because you don't pray the same way I pray. All right? And if it's room within the, the Sharia, within the text from the Kitab wa Sunnah, that there is a certain way that the Prophet ﷺ prayed and the hadith can be taken this way or that way. If there's room there, which you're being ficky, then I should not split hairs with you. You pray with your hands down, I pray with my hands on my across my chest. Your hands being prayed down does not invalidate the, the prayer. According to what's the sound correct view, it doesn't invalidate the prayer. It doesn't at all. It's not one of those things that actually stops the prayer from being accepted or invalidates it. All right? And this is important to know. So I don't have to now split hairs with you because you don't pray with your hands above your navel or your hands across your chest. Which keeps the Muslim Ummah in a position of power to move forward. Because if we're going to bicker over the nuances or over every little single thing, then we can't, we can't actually solidify ourselves if that's going to be the determining factor. All right? So that's what we mean by being more ficky. And less strictly, when we say being less strictly, what we mean by that is not to be so strict and staunch towards the position that you have taken. All right? Not to be so strict on your opinion. Not to be so strict on your madhab. Not to be more strict on your sheikh. Not to be more strict on how you view things. How you see things. If it is room and area in that to actually be talking about in terms of fiqh, then we can move forward as unison. And what we're going to use, and all of this, if you understand what we're trying to say in this talk, you will understand that you will avoid issues that are sticky. Okay? Now, there is no doubt that uh, Allah Jalla wa'ala, as well as His Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, has commanded the Ummah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to be united. All right? So the, the, the unison of the Muslim Ummah is obligatory for them to be united. That's the also for them. It's for them to be collectively together. All right? And we're going to show those verses here. And we're going to use the commentary of Sheikh Salih Fuzan, Allah to help us understand these ayats. And help us understand that Allah Jalla wa'ala want unison from us. He does not want discord. He do not want disunity. That is not the way that Islam is promoted. Allah Jalla wa Ala, He says in the Quran, Talking to all of the Muslims. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, And hold you all together collectively to the habl of Allah, to the rope of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then He said, Do not become divided. Do not become separated. Do not break off from that. Okay? Allah also says in the Quran, وَلَا تَكُونُوا كَالَّذِينَ تَفَرَّقُوا وَاقْتَلَفُوا Allah said, then do not be like those who divided, separated, and differed. Do you understand now? Do not be like the Jews and the Christians, those who had divine books 
And then because even with the divine books, as Allah Jalla Wala says, we'll call it till Yahud, Laysa Til Nasara Ala Shay. We'll call it till Nasara, Laysa Til Yahud Ala Shay. Wahum Yakluna Kitab. Allah says that what? That the Jew says to the Christian, you don't have nothing you stand upon. And the Christians say likewise to the Jew, you don't have nothing to stand upon. But yet they study and recite from the same book. So Allah is telling us not to fall into those footsteps. You have a divine guidance. You have an explanation to that divine guidance. You have the sunnah. So do not allow yourselves to disagree and to break off, okay? Allah also says, in the farraku deenahum wa kanu shi'a lasta minhum fi shay. Allah said, indeed, those who separate and divide within their deen, they become schisms, parties, and sects. You, O Muhammad Wasallam, had nothing to do with them. And rally their affair is only with Allah who subhanahu wa ta'ala fi surah al-am. Also Allah Jalla wa'ala says, شَرَعَ لَكُمْ مِنَ الدِّينِ مَا وَصَى بِهِ نُوحًا وَالَّذِي أَوْحَيْنَ إِلَيْكِ وَمَا وَصَيْنَ بِهِ إِبْرَهِيمُ وَمُوسَ وَعِيسَ أَنْ أَقِيمَ الدِّينِ وَلَا تَفَرَّقُ فِيهِ So the shura, verse 13. So in these verses, you can see the obligation of what? Being united. The pro prohibition of being divided and being uh, in, in disagreeing. The prohibition of being divided and being a discord. All right, Allah says, legislated for you from the deen is what has been enjoined upon Nur, likewise what has been revealed to you, O Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi and what has been enjoined um, uh, to Ibrahim, Musa, and Isa. And what is what has been enjoined to them, what has been legislated for them is that they establish the deen and do not become divided therein. All right? Sheikh Sali Fazan of Allah says, فَلَا يَجُوزَ لِلْمُسْلِمِينَ أَنْ يَتَفَرَّقُوا فِي دِينِهِمْ and this is important, right? There is not, it's not permissible for the Muslims to become what? To divide within their deen. All right, I know you're going to say it. Go ahead. It's already out there. We have different sets. That's true. All right? We have different people who don't follow the same Akita. That's true. We have different people who do X, Y, and Z. Individuals who go against the norm. And when I say the norm, I'm talking about the origin. The origin, as we seen in the ayat, Allah Jalla wa Ala, He tells the believers, He says, Allah wa Rasulahu. Okay? Obey Allah and His Messenger. So the origin is Kitab wa Sunnah. Do you understand that? That's the origin. The origin is the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Period. So whoever starts with that basis. Now, the way that those two sources is going to be understood, we have verses in the Quran where Allah Jalla wa Ala makes it clear how we to understand those ayats. All right? And those ahadith from the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala He says, "But in aminu bi mithli ma amantum fakadih tadaw." If they believe like you believe, here Ibn Kathir, a Qutbi, a Tabari, all the Mufassirin, they agree that the, uh, the pronoun here, if they believe like you, the pronoun you is referring to the Sahabas. All right, if they believe like you believe, Allah said, "Fakadih tadaw," they will be guided which shows the status that the understanding of the Sahabas and the way that they understood these texts and how they apply them takes precedence. And this is what we refer back to as far as our understanding. Also, Allah Jalla says, um, وَمَنْ يُشَاكِكِ الرَّسُولَ مِنْ بَعْدِ مَا تَبَيَّنَ لَهُ هُدَى وَيَتَّبِعِ غَيْرِ سَبِيلِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ And to the end of this ayat in Surah Nisa, whoever opposes the messenger and he follow, opposes the messenger after the clear guidance come to him and he follow a way other than the way of the believers, all the Mufassirun agree that the believers in this verse is talking about the Sahabas with one Allah Ta'ala alayhi. Alright, so I'm only bringing this for a reason because the asl, the origin, is the book of Allah, the sunnah, with the understanding of the salaf. Alright, meaning the Sahaba then their students and their students, hakatha, right, etc. This is how it is. That's the origin. So if anyone's sticking to that format and they come up and they decide to not go towards that format and they decide to lean towards the position of their imam or the position of themselves or the position of a scholar or position of a madhab or position of this, then they are the ones who farraku deenahum. They are the ones who are dividing their deen. وَكَانُوا شِيَعَ And they are the ones who are breaking up into schisms and, and, and hisms. They're supposed to be on the same format of what we're talking about. So yes, there are different sets that are out there, but each of those different sets, they have split off from the jama'ah. It's not the other way around. 
It's not the jama'ah that's upon the haq have split from the Muslims. It's the other way around. It means that the people who have not stuck to the jama'ah, and the jama'ah is only based on what we're talking about. Kitab wa sunnah fahma salaf. That's the jama'ah. If they stick and hold to those tenets, that's the jama'ah. Whoever holds on to it, even if it's one, even if it's more, it exactly whoever holds on to that format is the jama'ah, okay? So whenever you have people splitting from that, then they're the ones who split it, and it's not that you're the one causing the split. I just wanted to make that clear. The shaykh, he continues, and he says a tremendous verse, which is pertaining to what we're talking about today. Allah, Jalla wa'ala, I mean, he says, Bali yajiwa yakuna ummatin wahida ala tuhid that it is incumbent upon the Muslims to be one one unity and unison upon Tawheed. Alright? And Tawheed have many different aspects and they have many facets and many different understandings. Alright? The Salaf of the past, they would divide Tawheed into two aspects. Which of the three aspects can be divided? They would divide it into three aspects, which is also understood uh, that once you go back to the earlier works of the A'imma, you will see how they have approached the issue of Tawheed in regards to the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Prophet Okay, Allah Jalla wa Ala He says, "Inna hadhi ummatukum ummatun wahida." Indeed, this ummah, this community, this nation of yours is only one. Wa ana rabbukum, and I am your Lord. Fa'buduni, so worship me. All right, the head of this ummah is Allah Azza wa Jalla. So worship me, but you have been ordered to be one Ummah, Surah Anbiya. لَا يَجُوزُ لِأُمَّةِ مُحَمَّدْ أَن تَتَفَرَّقُ فِي عَقِيدَتِهَا وَفِي إِبَادَتِهَا وَفِي أَحْكَامُ دِينِهَا Pay attention to this. It is not permissible for the Ummah of Muhammad to divide, to separate within their belief and in their worship and in the Ahkam of their deen. Do you understand that? All right, now. It's important why we're going to stop here. He said, the Ummah of Muhammad. How many people claim to be from the Ummah of Muhammad? So if you're from the Ummah of Muhammad, then it is not, in, it is not permissible for you to divide and to separate. You must stick to the guidelines. So we have many people who claim to be from the Ummah of Muhammad. So this has to be defined. What is the Ummah of Muhammad? How can you be a part of the Ummah of Muhammad? This needs to be understood because if you're saying you're from the Ummah of Muhammad, then you can't come with your own system. You can't come with your own understanding. You must apply it in the way that it must be understood to be applied. If you're from the Ummah of Muhammad, then these ayats pertain to you. If you're from the Ummah of Muhammad, Muhammad وسلم, then these ahadiths pertain to you. And you must tread in the footsteps of the companions with Allah Ta'ala and carrying it up. So, the Ummah of Muhammad and Tafarraku fi Adi Kiritiha, they cannot divide in their belief. And we shouldn't stop there. So, for those individuals who are strict to just the adherence of Akita, and that's it, and they just stop at Akita, then they're wrong. You're not correct. Because Akita in and of itself is not where you stop that. The deen is not just restricted to Akita. Do you understand that? The deen is actually broader than just Aqidah. It deals with Akhlaq. It deals with Bu'amalat. It deals with different things, which is why they call it Minhaj. All right? So the methodology in everything you do, and then you can tell by the way that you see how Bukhari is set up, how Muslim is set up. When you look at the books, there are many chapters that deal with what? Multiple different things. Whether it's buying and selling, whether it is hajj, whether it is uh, loaning, whether it is debt, whether it is land sharecropping, whether it is this, whether it is that. So it's many rules and regulations, heads, this, that. So it's just not restricted to Akita. All right? It's just not restricted to Akita. Even though Akita is the foundation, all right, that you want to have a sound Akita, but it's not restricted to Akita. So those people who are strictly and think that, no, we just supposed to be an Akita, Akita, you're wrong. No, it pulls it, branch out to all of these different things. Like he says, For example, you have an individual who come and say, that, no, this is halal. As far as the ahkam, this is permissible. And then another individual come along and say, no, this is impermissible, that he does it, he says this without any evidence. He says, This is not permissible. But then he gives us a point that we must understand. Human beings, by the very nature of a human, is that they will disagree, all right? They will disagree. No one will just agree, me and me, 100%. This is not the 
uh, state of a believer. But, I mean of a human being, the nature of a human being. But when it comes to certain things you cannot disagree and shouldn't disagree on, then that can be understood. Like the deen, like the akida, like the ibadah, like the things that he mentioned, like the akam. You should not disagree on those things. All right? He says, he says, the verse where Allah Jalla wa'ala, he says, وَلَا يَزَالُونَ مُقْتَلِفِينَ إِلَّا مِنْ رَحِمَ رَبُّكْ وَلِذَلِكَ خَلَقَهُمْ Allah says that they will continue to differ they will continue to differ except for the one whom Allah, whom our Lord has mercy on, one whom your Lord have mercy upon. And for that reason, this is khalaqahum, this is the way that they were created. Okay? It's Surah Hud, verse 118 to verse 119. The Shaykh, he says, however, that differing should be directed towards returning back to the book of Allah and the Sunnah. I want to stop here, all right? So, we hear about this, we know about this, people hear this all the time. So how come the communities that scream to take from the same sources, to be upon the Dawah to Salafiyya, to be upon this and that, how come it's still discord? How come it's still no unity amongst these individuals? Something isn't right. If we're all saying we're taking from the Book of Allah, and we're all saying we're taking from the Sunnah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and we're all saying we're using the Faham and the understanding of the Salaf, and we're all saying that we're applying and, 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 and returning back to the ulama, and we're all saying the same thing, so how is it possible that we are not united? It doesn't make sense. Something is wrong. It's no way in the world we all can claim to have the same source, but yet it comes out with a different outcome. It's not possible. There was a group of individuals who preceded us who claimed to have the same set, take from the same sources, and we seen that they were actually in unison and they was in harmony. So how come we're claiming and attaching ourselves to these same very individuals, but the outcome is totally different? That's because there is some fahm is being misapplied. There is some su'u fahm. There is some distortion. There is some deficiency. And there is some false claims to what we're actually saying. So when the Sheikh is saying that if you and I have a disagreement, then there is a format. There is an obligation upon you and I. Okay, is upon obligation. Whether we're from the arm, whether we're from the tulab, whether we're from the ulama, there is an obligation upon us. Whether we're from the, the layman, the commoners, whether we're from the student of knowledge, or whether we're from the people of knowledge, it's a, a obligation upon us if we have a different uh, opinion or dis or disagreement or discord. We must return it back to Allah and His Messenger. The verse is clear. Allah said, "For internazatum fi shay." Okay, meaning anything. He didn't restrict it. When he says shay'en and he made it nakira, indefinite, it means to am, okay? You feed to am. As in the Sulu Fiqh, they said that this actually applies to anything that you differ in, that you would disagree in. Then you return it back to Allah and this messenger. But Allah didn't leave it like that. He placed a sharatta. He placed a condition, a stipulation, so that the one who really going to apply and practice this to the T is the one who does what? If you truly believe in Allah, look what Allah placed the condition is. If the belief in Allah is true, and if the belief in the last day is true, if you truly believe in Allah in the last day, that you're going to be brought account, then you're going to apply this verse. Do you understand that? That tests your level of Iman. You want to talk about Akita? That tests your belief. So if me and you have a disagreement and you want to go back to... The dis you want to go back to using the kufar as a way to help us solve our problems or you want to go use the opinion of so-and-so or your own desires or your own nafs or you want to use this instead of using the kitab with sunnah then that let me know and that should let anyone know that shows you that there is some weakness in your claim to believe in Allah in the last day because even in these verses if you go back to the tafsir and surah Nisa these verses are sent down dealing with an individual who have went to the Jew instead of going to the Prophet it was actually a Jew that was disputing with a Muslim and he told the Muslim that we should go to Muhammad 
The Jew was saying we need to go to Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. The Muslim did not want to go to who? He did not want to go to Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, which is a sign of nifaq, hypocrisy. So Allah jalla wa'ala restricted and said, if you believe in Allah in the last day, you're going to return it back to the book in the sunnah. So we got a disagreement. We're all on one accord. We're sitting in this masjid. Here we are, and we're saying we're pumping the da'wah to Salafiyyah. But yet, one of the members from the masjid, he wants to do something a certain way. He wants to move a certain way. Instead of the simple fact of us disagreeing and that he's going a certain way, do he have evidence for what he's saying? Is it solidified within the book? Is it solidified within the sunnah? Is it room for argumentation in terms of looking at different rulers and different mas'ala? Is it a fiqhi issue? Okay, can we have this simple thing? Is he sticking to the format? If so, then why do I have to split with him? Why cannot we turn back to the book and the sunnah is room for that and is room for this. Why do I must have to split with him now? Now once I split with him, it causes us to become weak. And then when it causes us to become weak, it caused me and those people who like me to join my side and join my cause against him. And now people who like him and his position, it caused them to join his side and like him. Now it's two fractions within that community. And then what happened is those two fractions cannot reside together because it's going to be tension. It's going to be discord. So the fraction, okay, whatever fraction is not holding ground is going to leave and break off from the masjid, which destroyed and, and, and harmed the actual unity and harmed, and, and harmed the masjid and going to go find another place so they can start up a masjid. And you see it? Wala tanaza u and I made it clear, do not dispute. Do you not see it? This is exactly what you see. You don't normally see a lot of masjids being selected as a masjid just to be a masjid and because it's needed in that area. You see people getting masjids because they don't agree with masjid so and so. So we want to make sure we can control things our way if and we can push our way and our agenda when we get this masjid over here. Taking from the Ravi community that's supposed to be one unit at all. It's permissible to have other masjids. It's permissible to have multiple masjids in the region. That's permissible. But should it be born out of what, what intention? Should it be born out because I have a discord? Almost. Should it be born out of discord? Should it be born out of disagreement? Or should it be done because the Prophet said, whoever builds a masjid for the sake of Allah, Allah will build them a house in the paradise. Should the intention be actually something culture, something wholesome. And another sign which you can see is that you have houses of Allah that are in the same area. You have houses in, of, of Allah that's in the same area. And you don't see no cooperation between those houses. Something is wrong. You don't see no unity being promoted within between those houses of Allah. Something is wrong. All right. Why? Because it shows again, if it was clear cut and if it was wholesome, then why cannot you do ta'awun? We're commanded in the Quran to do what? Wa ta'awun wa biru wa taqwa. Wa ta'awun wa ithima wa We are commanded to cooperate upon righteousness and good. So if you have a masjid, I have a masjid, that's taqwa. Masjid is an action of taqwa. It's an action of bil. Okay, so we're both having a masjid, then why we cannot communicate? Why can we not cooperate? Why can we not come together and consolidate? Why can we not do things that is actually right and move in one unison? Why? What's the problem? If you look at the earlier Salaf, you see this exactly what they were doing. It wasn't just because I split from so-and-so. And it was clear when you've seen individuals during the time of the Prophet and even during the time of the companions who split off and wanted to do their own thing, it was clear to the Muslims and the Jama'at that this group became a group and they became a Shia from those groups that broke them into schisms because they broke from the main body. They the ones who have separated and became divided because they broke from the main body. And it's due to either multiple tools of different things. Desire. Ignorance is at the head of all of them. But the person's desires. A person's misunderstanding of not being fiqhi. You are in the land of the non-believers. You must be more fiqhi. It can't be black and white. You're not even in a position of power. You're not even the majority. You don't even hold the majority state or the majority saying. Saying. There are certain things that need to go in play. So you, from a thick point of view, from understanding all of the spectrums, all of the issues, and understanding what you're dealing with, it does not allow you the room to be strictly. You don't even have the ground for it. You're not in a position of power. 
How can I say, for example, if I if I own the country, I'm running the country, and it's all predominantly just Muslims, and we can make and make the rules how we want and set forth, then we could be a little bit more strict. We could be a little bit more okay. This is how we wanted to run. This is what we wanted to stick on. But you can't do that when you're not in charge. You can't do that when you're not actually the head of it. So all of the, the, the Muslims on the wayside in those different houses of Allah is going to feel the ramification of your decision of splitting in discord because you're not sticking to being more fiqhy and less strictly. You understand? The Shaykh continues. He says, Amma man you call kullu yabqi or kullu yubqa ala madhabihi. As for what is said from individuals, and this is what we see. That's we got to be honest with one another. Each person remain upon their way, their methodology. Each person remain upon their belief. And the people are at liberty, which this country actually pre uh, preach, that you are liberty, the liberty to do what you want. And you see that they actually uphold to this too, because if you want to be someone who is a homosexual, a lesbian, and, 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 and believe that this is correct, then you can do it. If you want to be someone who can change their gender, then you can do that. This is the liberty that they extend to you, which is all from the plots of the shaitan. But people want to be at liberty to shake his hand, meaning that the people are free. They can choose whatever they want in regards to their opinions. Whatever makes sense to them, they can choose. But the deen is not set up that way. Allah Jalla says in the Quran, Have you, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, have the heavens and the earth have been in agreement or follow what their and their and their desires, it would have been heavens and earth would have been ruined. Allah didn't leave it up to <laughs> to imperfect beings who their who are, who are their um their intellect is limited, their understanding is limited, they don't have a full spectrum of comprehension, they cannot even ward off things if they didn't have the angels there to protect them, and they didn't have Allah Jalla wa Allah protecting them. They don't even understand their bodies or different things like that. Why would Allah leave it to them? He didn't leave it to them. Come on, makes sense. So Allah gave us a format. And he told us to stick to this format. And whoever separates from this format, no matter whatever cause it be, if you separate from this format, then you are the one who are falling into the prohibition of the ayat. You are the one to breaking up into schisms. But whoever sticks and holds to the format, then they are the ones who are sticking to the jama'ah. And they are the ones who are going to get the reward from Allah. So the shaykh, he says, also, when you talibun So leave them alone. They can seek and request the freedom of their belief, the freedom of their speech. He said, all of this is false. And it is something that Allah Jalla wa Allah has prohibited when He says, That verse prohibited this liberty stuff. That verse prohibited you moving how you want to move. Because Allah said, hold you all collectively to the rope of Allah and do not become divided. So henceforth, y'all have to hold on to what the rope of Allah. Third and not different in terms of what the rope of Allah is. Some say it's the Quran. Some say it's the Sunnah. Some say it's the Quran and the Sunnah. Some say that it's the, it's the Quran, the Sunnah, and it's the actual... Um, is the actual Islam or is the deen of Islam and then some say that all of them are correct because it is each one of them can be the rope of Allah hold you collectively and I didn't say this on my own Sheikh Salih Fuzan he says this in his explanation to a, form, a famous Akita poem that is al Ha'iya, where he goes into the different aspects of uh, the, the meaning of Hablullah Tayyip he says فَيَجِبُ أَنَّ اشْتَمِيَ فِي إِرُدِ اقْتِلَافِنَا عَلَى كِتَابِ اللَّهَ تَفِي مَسَالِ الْفِقْرِ إِذَا اقْتَلَفْنَا فِي شَيْءٍ نَعْرِدُهُ عَلَى أَدِلَّ فَمَنْ شَهِدَ لَهُ دَلِيلٌ صَرْنَ مَعَهُ وَمَنْ أَقْطَعَ دَلِيلٌ فَإِنَّ لَنَا نَأْخُذُ بِأَقْطَاءٍ والله if we understood this issue in the West we would be upon a lot of good if we truly understood what he just said we would be upon a lot of good man all this riff raff wouldn't be happening pay attention to what he said we are united okay and when it comes to the point when we are in a disagreement okay then we are to take that disagreement and we are to place it with the book of Allah, okay? Meaning, we need to go to the book of Allah and look how to resolve that disagreement. We need to go to the Sunnah and look how to resolve that disagreement. That's what we need to do. He says, even if it's in the, the disagreement falls in the area of issues pertaining to fiqh, okay? He says, if we differ in anything in those areas where fiqh can be applied, 
All right? Then we are to take it back against the Adilla. Okay? Now, when he says Adilla, Adilla is the plural word for the word which is known as Dalil. Okay? When he says Dalil, then we need to know what Dalil is. Dalil in Islam comes from two sources. And then there's other sources which are subcategories that can be used as a means of Dalil. But the two primary sources is the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the authentic Sunnah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That is the primary sources for Dalil. Okay? Now, there are other sub-branches that the ulama use, like Ijma, consensus, like Qiyas. Okay? They use other sub-branches for things that can be used as evidence. But the two main primary is the Kitab wa Sunnah. So we need to take our disagreement and let's throw it and weigh it against what? The Adillah. If the evidence, the Sheikh said, whoever is witness for him, the Dalil, the evidence is a witness for him. All right? Then we are with that individual based on the evidence and not on the individual alone. So if so-and-so party has a problem with so-and-so and they both reside in Masjid A, okay, then we're going to look at the evidence of so-and-so against so-and-so. If the evidence of his disagreement is based in solid, which is either in the Kitab or the Sunnah, and the understanding, and it can be applied that way, if it's a fiqhi matter, then we're going to take, not say take the side, but we're going to be with the one who the evidence is strong with. If the evidence is against the other individual or is for the other individual and against the other one, then we're going to ride closely to the evidence and not the person per se. No matter how well eloquent or well spoken the person is, no matter how much knowledge the person may have, no matter how much he had memorized, no matter how much we might like him, his personality, whatever, none of that is the factor. The denominator factor in this is the evidence. If his position is closer to the truth and it is strongly backed by the evidence, then that's the position that we're following. This is what the Sheikh is saying. He says, however, if the evidence is not strong, okay, and it's not with him, and the mistake, then we do not take the mistake. We do not take it. This is something that I really see, and it trinkled down, man. It's, it's, it's with the layman. It's with the tulab. Definitely it's with the tulab and the du'at. Wallahi, tallahi, wallahi. I just never understood it that we have multiple students, and it's always been this way for me. You have multiple students all claiming to follow the same thing, but they cannot get in one room together. We can't sit down and have a meet. I remember they were talking about Sheikh Mukbil, Ramatullah ta'ala alayhi, and it was mentioned how Sheikh Yahya, and them, before it stopped, that all of the students of Sheikh Mukbil would meet once a year. They would sit down, they would talk, they would meet. This was something of Kaya. And they will lay out certain things of how to move as far as the dawah, what to do, that just showing that unity, unison. We see brothers coming back, studying for a smooth with time and getting back. And then for one reason or another, which trickle down once you really strip away the essence, it's really personal anyway. So-and-so can't deal with so-and-so. So-and-so don't want to be with this person. So-and-so don't want to be with that person. But all of them are teaching from mainly the same books quoting mainly the same scholars and saying mainly the same thing. And then the commoners, they are caught into the, the battle of that. So now you are you are sitting here fighting whether or not you like this person versus you like that person. You like his delivery versus you don't like his delivery. You like this or like that. And you have to be under you have to be clear. Because what the Sheikh is telling you, he's giving you the measurement stick. And it's not about personality, it's not about what they memorize, it's not about what they study, it's not about this, that. It's about the evidence. Whatever the evidence support this is what you stick with. This is what it's about. And you see all of this conflict and this strife and you don't see no growth. Since when your mission is not on behalf of the Muslims, why are you thinking that you're in the West that you don't need to be one solidified body? When did that leave your mind? Why the ayats of obligation of being unity left your mind? And the people who claim to adhere to the Dawah of Salafiyyah should be the first and foremost to add, to, um, to implement, and to comply and conform to these verses and to these obligations. They should be the ones at the foremost who should understand them properly because they say they follow the Salaf and their understanding. They say they follow the companions and the understanding. So they should be the ones who carry this out. You understand? Be more fiqhi, less strictly. It's not about the masjid that you go to. It's not about that. It's never been about that. 
If it's a house of Allah and it's based and built on a pure foundation of taqwa, then it is a masjid that is for Allah. And it's Allah's masjid. And if I'm in that area, I can go to that masjid. And if I'm in another area, I can go to that masjid because it's the house of Allah. If it don't have things in it and the foundation is not torn up from the beginning and it's not stuff that in there that is prohibited for you not to pray in it, like graveyards and things like that, then I can go to that masjid. Okay, I'm not going to let no student, I don't care how long they study, tell me where I can go and where I cannot go. He's not Allah and he's not the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They're the only two authorities that can tell me where I can go and not. And when it comes to the ruler, we have a certain level of obedience, hearing and obeying to them. Okay, when they can say, okay, you can't be here, we don't allow this, we don't allow that, then we have to act on that. It's a difference between a non-believer ruler and a believing ruler. This applies to the believer ruler, not the non-believing ruler. The non-believing ruler, it's upon mustahab. It's recommended out of the, um, for the simple fact of keeping what we call harmony or something like that when you're in the lands of the non-believers. But it's not like the same as, as what a believing ruler. Okay, with a believing ruler, you have to do what we call submitting wa ta'ala, obeying here, all right? So, last but not least, he mentioned here, he says, In Allah Jalla wa Ala Lam Ya Turukna Naktalafu wa Natafaraka Biduni and Yada Alana Mizan and Bay Baina Sahih Minakata. And he said, Allah Jalla wa Ala did not leave us to differ and to divide and to separate without giving us and placing for us a scale that we can weigh things between what is correct and what is not correct. Bal Wada Lana Qurana wa Sunna. And, and in the sunnah, all right? فَرُدُّوهُ إِلَى اللَّهِ Allah says, return it back to Allah. That dispute that you have, return it back to Allah. يعني القرآن والرسول يعني السنة والرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول And the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said, إِنِّي تَالِكُمْ فِيكُمْ مَا إِنْ تَمَسَّكْتُمْ بِي لَنْ تَدِلُّ بَعْدِي كِتَابُ اللَّهِ وَالسُنَّةِ The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said, it's tremendous hadiths collected by Malik, Imam Malik and his muwatta, the book that was uh, authentic before Sahih Bukhari, um, Iman Wah, Iman Malik book, one hadith that is mentioned. The Prophet said, "Indeed, I have left amongst you um, something that if you hold firmly to it, you will never go astray after me, and that is the book of Allah and my Sunnah." فَكَأَنَّ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ مَوْجُودَ بَيْنَنَا بِبُوَجُودِ الصُّنَّةِ مُدَوَّنَ مُمَصَحِّهَا وَمُوَطِّحَا. And he said that actually, the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم not being here, the fact that his Sunnah is here, is like the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم being here. So if you can't go to the Prophet ﷺ directly, which we can't because he passed, we can still go to his sunnah and use it as an arbitrator between us. We have them in Fatullah. He said, this is from the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had the ummah upon the ummah of Muhammad. أَنَّهُ لَمْ يَتْرُكَهَا فِي مَتَاهًا بَلْ تَرُكَهَا وَعِنْدَهَا مَنْ يَدُّلْهَا عَلَى اللَّهِ وَيَدُّلْهَا عَلَى الصَّوَابِ أَمَّا لَدِي لَا يُرِيدُ حَقْ وَيُرِيدُ أَنْ كُلُّ وَاحِدٍ يَبْقَ عَلَى مَذْهَبِهِ وَعَلَى نِحْلَتِهِ And that's what we see. Wallahi, this is what we see. Right? If you look at it, Allah did not leave us just in the wind, just to bicker, discord, disagree, uh, disagreement. He did not leave us. Rather, He gave us something that would indicate as far as Allah and that indicate that which is correct. As for the one who do not want the truth, and he wants that each person be remain upon their own way and their own methodology, he's not going to follow this. This doesn't mean nothing to him. What does it matter if we got big masajids that overlook smaller masajids? What does it matter if all if we got the masajids on a harmony and a unity and they're working collective? That don't matter to that person. That person wants to follow their desire in the way that they want to look. What does it matter that we all claim to pray towards the same Qibla, which is one of the strong evidence showing you the unity and the obligation of unity for the Muslims? Okay, the individual doesn't care about that, that situation. So what does it matter if we don't have nothing to move us in that court? We need to really take a look at this, man. All of these hands being out, donate to this masjid, donate to that masjid. I'm not against donating. We got to help the, the bait of Allah. It's upon the believers to maintain the bait of Allah anyway. But think about it. If we really were moving like the Salaf were moving, we would have solidified ourselves. And the people who have knowledge and have studied, this is their job. This is your duty to make sure you come back and contribute to that consolidation. You must come back and contribute to this harmony here. Because Allah said, Allah tells us to be united. 
So if you're coming back with some knowledge, you should be working in the way of consolidating and causing, bringing about harmony amongst the Muslims in their masajids, not giving or contrib contrib con uh, contributing towards uh, 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 dividing and differing. And you contribute towards dividing and differing when you start to line yourself up with Masjid A, and Masjid A is on Gilligan Island, and it doesn't mess with none of Masjid C, B, or I mean uh, uh, B, C, or D. And Masjid A is saying, okay, we're the ones with the hawk, and we're not even going to deal or engage with B, C, or D. Then you come back, and having the information that you have, you sit there and side with them, and you don't sit there and try to iron out and refer back to the Book of Allah and the Sunnah and the Fahm and the Salaf, then you are contributing to the, dis the discord and the disagreement and the separation. You're contributing. You're not doing what Allah had charged upon you by allowing you and teaching you his deen. No, you come back and you work with Masjid B, C, and D for the consolidation of solidifying themselves. This is what you do. This is what your knowledge mandates. Everyone, all of us are obliged to be united in the Ummah of Muhammad. We're getting ready to stop, inshallah. But all of us are united to be what? In the uh, be one Ummah. We are united. That's what we work towards. That's what we strive towards. That goal should never be moved from sight. And if we really were on point, wallahi, we really were more fiki and less strictly, think about this. We would have a university by now. Do you, do, you, do you not find it amazing that the Muslims do not have one university? And when I say the Muslims here, I'm talking about those again that we mentioned earlier who stick to the format. And the format is the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of Fahma Salaf. That's what I mean. We don't have one university. We have many students who are here, uh, uh, many students who ascribe to this blessed hour. We have many students who ascribe to this format we're talking about. But we don't have one university. It's, it's, it's amazing to me because something is off. Something is wrong. Do you understand that? Something is wrong. And this is something that the earlier generations of Muslims did. They made the masjid a citadel of learning. They contribute and gave sadaqa on their ilm. They actually produced it universities and places and institutions so that people can learn and uplift the community. And you uplift the community by way of learning. And which place other than offering them ways that they can learn in a university and a library? Why come all of the libraries are locked shut? I don't understand that. That doesn't make sense. And I understand for the sake of someone stealing something, but then you place somebody in charge to watch the library. It's just that simple. But you leave the library open. I don't care if it's Arabic or English. You leave it open, and you should leave the Arabic library open for the simple fact of encouraging individuals to learn Arabic. If I see students so-and-so and students so-and-so sitting in the masjid read, or sitting in the library reading the Arabic book, it's going to inspire me, who don't know any Arabic, to want to learn Arabic. And it's going to inspire me to want to go into those books because if I look up the student so-and-so and I look up the student so-and-so, what is going to do? And this is what we saw with Sheikh Alabani. This is why he donated what his library to the University of Medina. And this is why when he was in the University of Teaching, he used to sit in the student's lounge and not in the teacher's lounge. Do you understand? It's an inspiration. If you reach a certain level, a men's that Allah allow you to reach, then why not be that kudwa, that example for others? Why is your library locked up? The very tool you need to raise any community and to raise any level of people is their ilm, is their knowledge, is their education. If the people are not educated correctly, they cannot refine themselves. Okay? Henceforth, a person mannered and a and, and person was ill-mannered. Someone who is well-mannered has been refined and has been educated. As a person who is uneducated has not been well-mannered, they're ill-mannered. But if you want to get people on a certain level, then you raise them up. Start looking how people are moving and to tell you. Are we moving in the unity and the consolidation of the Muslim ummah? We had it at one time. It was there. And then the discord came. As Allah tells us in the Quran, that what? The people of the book, they did not differ until after what? The clear evidence came to them. And how many of us do that? 
we get the book and we have the sunnah, we have the fahman of the salaf, and I can't deal with you, you can't deal with me, no, let's go over here, I don't like the shine that you get, I don't like this what's going on, hostage, jealousy, envy, all of this different stuff. And we as the commoners need to know that now during this pandemic, we've seen how weak the masajids are. We've seen how weak, even those masajids that got boards, even those massages that got directors and stuff like that, we see how weak the houses of Allah has become. And we're charged with that because we are responsible for maintaining the houses of Allah, not the government. Because we're not in the land where the rulers take care of the houses of Allah. But the way that we move is showing how weak we are as a structured union. The masjid itself is a masjid. It's just a place. But the thing that give life to that masjid is the people. The people who give life to that masjid. So if the people are not unified and not strong and solidified and they're not working towards that unison goal, which the Quran and the Sunnah and the Salaf encourages and promotes, then we are losing our point. So be more fickle is what I want to say. Be more fickle. Be more understanding that if it's room and Masa'il fiqh, then it's nothing to split hairs over, especially if we're working towards evidence. Be less strictly. You're not in a position of power to be more strict anyway. So don't close yourself off from the body of Muslims. Don't become so strict that, yeah, I don't go down there because that's Ahlul Bidda, Aki. Come on. For real, if you wouldn't know what Bidda is if it bit you. That's really Ahlul Bidda? Like, come on, be honest. If that's really Ahlul Bidda. Even Ahmed went so far to say that if a person was to pray, the permissibility of praying behind an innovator, all right? One who probably calls to his innovation. He's a known innovator. That if an individual salam out, he makes the salutations, and he go home and pray, he has did an innovation. That's how hard this stuff, you gotta go back into the books. This stuff is not understood the way that you're talking about. The Akira, Akira to Wasatiyah, from um, the, the, the Akira Wasatiyah from Ibn Taymiyyah. If anybody who read the biography of Ibn Taymiyyah, he had refuted every known deviancy <laughs> that came across him in his time. No one can dispute that. Right? But how come the way that he dealt with the people of innovation is totally different than what we see today? How come the way that he moved and, and the way that he dealt, even though he was strict in adhering to the Akita and the Preston understanding of the Salaf, how come he wasn't moving that way? It's already reported from his student, Ibn Uqayyim, that when so-and-so died from a deviant, I want you to hear it, from a mutadi, when a person died, he went to the man's house and gave condolences to his wife. This was a deviant. He gave condolences to a deviant, a known mutadi, one who actually was his opponent, who actually went against Ibn Taymiyyah and even played a part or a hand in Ibn Taymiyyah being locked up. But he still went and offered his condolences to the wife of this deviant. But yet we have individuals who say they study and they learn and they are so separated and divided and they're not even moving in the same way. How are you on a different planet and you're talking about you will understand Akita? You don't understand it. How are you on a different planet? You have to be, the pl diplomacy has to be there. You have to be a diplomat. You in any position of leadership, you have to be a diplomat. You got to deal with the non-believers. You got to deal with the innovators. You got to deal with the people over here. You have to be a diplomat. Where's your diplomacy? The message of Allah Wasallam implemented, implemented diplomacy. He dealt with all different types of people. And he implemented diplomacy. Let's likewise with the companions who follow his footsteps. They implemented diplomacy. And did not act as if just because so-and-so got a distorted belief, I can no longer deal with that individual. I can no longer engage with that individual. You're wrong. And the ulama that we know and love and trust, they behave in a similar fashion. They deal with people. And you see them dealing with organizations that may or may not be 100% correct, kitab wa sunnah. They still deal with those, in, in, those individuals and those communities. But yet they don't, they are not dividing the people and saying that, okay, so-and-so shake is off it because he deal with this organization or he deals with that organization they're not doing that you only see that from these ignorant westerners who come back here with this discord and claim that they have some ilm but they're young and they don't have no ilm they don't have no right information they don't have the right akhlaq they don't have the right understanding their objectives of not moving correctly and they are causing a lot of discord and strife because they're not working towards consolidation this is what you have you don't have it with the muslims that know what to do right because the scholars are not moving that way. 
We have to solidify ourselves in a position of power. The pandemic already showed us that. We don't have a body of power amongst the urban community. We do not. We had certain organizations that were working towards that. And I'm going to say it, Jamil Alameen, even though whatever the problems that he had, the basis of different things, they were working towards group economics. They were working towards group organization. You had Abu Muslim who had also was working towards group economics. Um, we had Hamid Sheikh Ali, who actually consolidated something together. They, they were working towards group economics. You even had the Worth Dean community, who were working towards group economics. This is something that is missing, wallahi, that we haven't seen amongst the urban Salafis. We don't see this group economics done. We see it in a small level with their group and with their masjid, and so that we can just say we got four masjids on the dawah, that's it. So let's cut everybody else off. They all off it. You can't engage. You can't, you can't interact with this one. You can't deal with this one. You can't deal with that one. It's just these four bad shits. They are the ones that's on the dawah. This is where you need to be going at. Balta. This is Balta. Let's not even understand it. This is not correct. And I challenge anyone. It's not correct. It's, it's even more so as far as a his being a schism. It's not correct. We don't restrict nothing in Allah's deen. That Allah and his messenger have not restricted themselves. We keep what's vast, what Allah keeps, and especially keeps vast. Do you understand that? We don't lock ourselves off. We work and we be diplomatic. And this pandemic has shown us that. So be more fiki and be less strictly, inshallah ta'ala. That's my advice to y'all. I know Salat came in. Inshallah ta'ala, sorry to you know, get a little bit passionate about that. But we really need to take this time as a golden opportunity. And for the commenters right now, start educating yourself during the month of Ramadan, getting yourself right. Let's start pushing the people who are above us and who are ahead of us, because we can give them advice as well. Let's start pushing them towards the way of moving towards consolidation. We are commanded from the book of Allah and the Sunnah to be consolidated. Okay, we need to start really pushing the bigger masjids that are not going against the format. So the one I want the one to misimply what I'm saying. If you got bigger masjids that are owned that are already established and that are not going against the format and that are even willing to even stick with the format if they are educated then we work with those masjids and we work with the resources of those masjids and we look at the smaller masjids as community efforts to help out in the locale for Salat we should be pushing towards one masjid ujamir where we have in one Juma'ah to collect Wallahi Akhi you want to know if you want to make a change shape the Kufar, man, it will be a positive change and it will be also a position of fear. The Kufar will either not like you, they will either fear you, or at the same time, they want to be Muslim. That's what's going to cause that love. One of the things of the Eid being done like that, on that level or that scale, will cause person, I want to be with the Muslims. I want to be Muslim. I want to take my Shahada. That's going to cause that love. So imagine having that. We should work towards the consolidation. Also, the students of knowledge, no matter what level you are, beginner, intermediate, advanced, you should be working towards the consolidation of the Ummah. This is a golden opportunity for us to do that. And before you start talking about, well, who are we going to rally behind? Who are we going to do this? Who are we going to do that? We're going to rally behind the Kitab was Sunnah Fahma Salaf. And any individual who have superseded us in ilm, in knowledge, in understanding, and have, have a real connection with the people of knowledge, and have a real way of fiqh and understanding how to move and apply certain things, then we're going to rally behind that individual. Because that individual is actually rallying with the kitab, with sunnah. And we're going to push towards that to get a what? A consolidated, what's the name? And I'm talking a bigger scale here. Let's get back to having a consolidated Muslim community in the tri-state area. I'm talking about all if you want to talk about New York, Baltimore, all the way to Philly, Jersey, whatever. We are moving in one unison. And in those masjids, they work with one another. They have group meetings. They have things like that. And we work towards that. The funds, whereas though each is the position of each masjid must be owned. We put together those people in play who have knowledge of iktisadiya, economics, who know how to really do finance, who know how to really do investing, who know how to really do what? Real estate. These different things, they know how to be in play and that we start buying our masjids. We start owning our masjids. We start buying different lands and we start building real institutions, universities and libraries. This is what we want to work towards, inshallah ta'ala. Hopefully that this can be done. Uh, might not be in our lifetime, but we should all strive to this, inshallah. Subhanakallahumbi hamdi, ashallahu alayhi wa sallam. Jazakallah khan.